Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video I'm going to be doing a walkthrough that will take advantage of the Xbox One's capability to stream gameplay from the Xbox console to a Windows 10 machine using the Xbox app. I'm going to be taking that to the next level with Parsec to actually allow you to stream this, uh, to stream your gameplay over the internet so wherever you are uh, within reason uh, you'll be able to play your Xbox games. Now there are ways to do this currently uh, which involves port forwarding uh, certain ports on your to your uh, Xbox Ones uh, and also using tools to always be aware of what your uh, IP address is for your house because the vast majority of consumer uh, broadband connections are what you call use what you call dynamic uh, IPs which means from time to time your IP address to your house will change. Uh, you, sometimes ISPs will allow you to purchase a static IP, which means that your IP address at your house will never change. Uh, but uh, most ISPs actually restrict that to business uh, broadband contracts, and those are usually quite a bit more expensive uh, when compared to the consumer variants uh, for the same uh, speed, but they do come with the guarantees of higher uptime uh, guarantees. But anyways, Parsec will make this uh, process very simple and will remove those slight security risks uh, that, that are involved with uh, port forwarding directly to your Xbox One. So without further delay, let's go ahead and jump right to it. To kickstart this tutorial, head over to parsec.tv and then click the download now link at the top of the navigation. Then go ahead and download the uh, executable for the uh, Windows. And that'll download pretty quickly. It's a uh, really lightweight program, so it shouldn't take very long to, to download at all. And uh, after you've downloaded it, click on the executable. And then click Yes, and you can read through the license agreement. And then click I Agree. After that, it'll download. It'll be a very quick install. Uh, and the first prompt that it's going to pop up is going to ask if you want to allow controller support. Since we're going to set the server up, uh, for an Xbox essentially pass through um, connection point, uh, we do want to install controller support, so click yes there. The second prompt is going to pop up is going to talk about UAC, uh, which is the prompt you just saw at the very beginning of this installation process that Windows automatically pops up. And for the best experience, uh, you'll want to disable that with Parsec so you can, don't have to worry about user, uh, user account control. Uh, you know, interfering with your uh, your experience. Uh, but I'm just going to click no because I've already read through that, it'll, but it'll bring up a guide on telling you how to disable UAC on your computer. Uh, but that's kind of a, a prerogative, your prerogative type deal if something if you want to do or if you prefer to keep UAC enabled. Uh, just a note though that if you do want to keep UAC enabled, uh, Parsec currently does not run as a uh, service, so it can't. You can actually uh, acknowledge user account control uh, messages when you're connecting through Parsec. So you will have to use like a uh, more standard uh, remote desktop connection, such as uh, Google's Chrome Remote Desktop um, or like TeamView or something, uh, for like the very basic things like logging into your computer um, and then any user account controls, like when you have to install uh, certain applications, you have to do that through a standard um, remote desktop application. Then you can close those down and use Parsec for the very low latency connections that you want for gaming. So go ahead and click close when you're finished downloading that. And then after you've uh, closed, go ahead and go to your start menu uh, and launch Parsec if it doesn't automatically launch like it just did. Uh, at this point in time, you're going to enter your email and your password for your Parsec account. So I'm going to do that and then we'll rejoin here in a second. All right, so after logging in, a prompt should pop up asking if you want to allow connections to this computer. Uh, since we're setting this computer up as a server, we're going to click yes. I'm not going to run through this whole process again on the client. It's pretty much the exact same process, but without a couple steps that you're going to have to do when, you, uh, when you're when you setting up the server uh, computer. So the client should be a little bit simpler. Uh, so on the client, you don't have to click yes, but on the server computer, click yes here, to, and then you can go ahead and proceed. So now you pretty much have Parsec uh, set up and installed. You can now see that uh, a new computer just popped up. That's the computer I'm on right now that I just clicked yes to allow connections to. Uh, so you can see in host, I have uh, set up to now uh, allow hosting. And if for some reason the uh, drivers for controllers did not actually install here, you'll have a message here saying that uh, driver or controller drivers 
uh, or controllers are not enabled or something along those lines. It's been a while since I've seen it, so I don't know the exact words, but it should say something about um, con uh, controllers are not enabled. Uh, and then it'll have a link and you can go to that link. It'll actually have a download for the drivers for your operating system. Uh, but since everything installed correctly, I do not get that message at this point in time. So now I pretty much have this computer set up as a server. Uh, you can, once you have it set up as a host, you can turn off hosting and then turn it on when you're getting ready to leave the house and you know you're gonna to wanna to play on your Xbox One. Uh, so you can turn it off and on, you don't have to have it. Once it's set up as a server, it doesn't always have to uh, be set up as a Parsec server. So you can flip it on and off at will. I can demonstrate that real quick. It's very fast turning it on and off. Uh, so essentially you can see that much. Uh, the little dingu here, uh, I have it cropped it's behind my face right now, but it essentially says the Parsec uh, service is running. So it just stops and starts the Parsec service that actually allows computers to connect to your computer. So now that we have uh, the Parsec pretty much up and running and this computer set up as a server, you're gonna want to launch your Xbox app just to make sure that everything is working as intended there. All right, so in the Xbox app, there's only two things you really need to address to make sure that this project will be successful. The first of which is just make sure that you are logged into your Xbox uh, account. And then the second option or second thing you're going to address is uh, the second icon from the bottom is called connection. Go ahead and click on that. And then uh, you should have an option in the top right to add a device. I've already connected my Xbox One, but if I didn't, at this point in time, I would be able to connect to it by clicking this button right here. And this will show all the Xbox uh, One devices you have on your local network. I can now see that I, the Xbox is playing uh, Madden, and at this point in time, I should have the option to uh, connect to the stream. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, and you can see that it is now connecting to my uh, Xbox One, and you can now see it's given a message uh, saying there's no controllers attached to this PC. Uh, that's because I will be using my controllers uh, on with a uh, the official wireless dongle to USB uh, on my other desktop computer that I'm gonna be using as a client. I will then be connecting my other computer uh, with a USB Wi-Fi adapter and my tablet uh, to connect over the uh, 4G LTE connection, uh, putting my other computer on a completely separate network uh, that has to be routed through all you know the cell towers and everything. Uh, so it'll be on a completely different network at, for this demonstration test. Of course, you wouldn't be in the same house uh, when you're actually using Parsec over the internet, uh, but for this demonstration, this is the easiest way for me to be able to record it all in the same spot. I will be traveling for work and have some downtime uh, in the evenings in the near future. Uh, so I will be testing this while I'm away uh, just to see how well it works um, when I'm hundreds of miles away uh, from my house. Uh, but that actually might happen before this video goes live because that's actually happening pretty quickly. Uh, and I uh, probably won't get this video edited and uploaded in that time being. Uh, but anyways, long story short, I will be testing this and probably doing another video on this in, in, the, in the future. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to demonstrate this with uh, connecting over the uh, LTE connection with 4G. So it should have a pretty good download. I normally get about 15 to 20 uh, megabit per second on the downstream uh, with 4G. So that is, that's pretty good for um, streaming 1080p content over the internet. And then I'll be having my controller connected to uh, my, my client computer, and I won't really have a controller connected to my server at this point in time. So let's go ahead and jump to the client computer, and then we'll go ahead and start the test. All right, so the screen you're now seeing is actually now my normal desktop, which is connected over the 4G LTE connection uh, through my hotspot on my tablet. Uh, real quick, before I get into connecting to my server computer, uh, which is actually on my home cable connection, uh, I wanted to go through a couple settings real quick. Outside of the bandwidth, which I'll get to here in a second, all these settings are what I normally run on, whether I'm connecting to my work computer or a, a cloud computer for gaming purposes to test gaming out. All these settings are my normal settings uh, that I normally run, so it's a good baseline for your experience, uh, and you can adjust the bandwidth based on upon what your downstream bandwidth is on your uh, local or on your computer that you're playing on. Uh, one real quick, quick thing, on immersive mode, I have that turned on. That'll essentially pass through like the Windows key. Uh, certain commands like Alt-Tab uh, will be passed through from your local computer to uh, the server computer that is running the, the Parsec service. 
Uh, and then one real quick note on the bandwidth. I normally have this all the way up to 30, uh, but since I am on a LTE connection, I normally get between 15 megabit per second to 20 megabit per second on my LTE connection on average. So I've set that down to 15, so it's kind of on the, the lower side of what I normally get. Uh, and that should uh, help eliminate uh, fluctuations in the stream quality uh, for a better experience. So I've set that to like my lower end of my average. So let's go back and jump back to the connect menu. And now I'm going to connect to my desktop with the random uh, Windows name because I haven't changed that yet. So you can now see I am connected to the uh, Parsec um, computer. There's a button right here uh, for Parsec, but you can just click on that and hide that. I always do that uh, just so that it, you have a nice, clean, empty screen. All right, so since I have immersive mode turned on, I can now hit my Windows uh, button. And now, uh, and now all this is entirely on the server computer, which is actually on my local connection. So even though I'm in the same house for this demonstration, everything from my computer that I'm recording from right now has to be streamed through my 4G connection up to the internet, you know, through all the data centers and all that, and back down through my uh, cable connection, which will connect to my server, my Parsec server, and to my Xbox One. So I'm just going to click on the Xbox app and launch that up and do essentially what we did earlier, but I'm doing it through the uh, client computer. So this would be a lot cooler if I was in a completely different location. Um, but like I said earlier, I probably will try to test this um, in some spare time when I'm uh, traveling for some training for, biz uh, for work. But you can see now I can see my Xbox, I can see what it's playing, and I can hit the stream button. So on my client computer I shouldn't I shouldn't see the uh, the message anymore saying the controller is not there because on my client computer I have the wireless dongle plugged in and my Xbox controller turned on uh, and Parsec is sending the the fact that there's a controller connected to through uh, the service uh, and through my connection to my server computer so now my ser my server computer thinks the Xbox controller is connected to it but it's really connected to a completely different computer that's being streamed through the internet so as far as responsiveness goes, uh, let's see if I can get that in the camera at a good angle without, you know, uh, so you can see responsiveness is pretty good. Um, even though this is streamed over the internet and, you know, uh, on an LTE connection, it's pretty good. And uh, I think Xbox is a pretty good use case for this, because even though it is being kind of double streamed uh, from the Xbox to the, my server computer and then over to the internet to my client computer. Um, Consoles are uh, usually pretty uh, immune to input latency. That's because TVs normally have higher input latency than a uh, than like computer monitors do. So the games are designed more, and the controllers themselves kind of work with uh, input latency a little bit better than you would with like a keyboard and mouse. Uh, if you're kind of doing a double stream weird thing on a computer, which I don't know why you do on a computer, um, since you'd be able to just connect straight to the server anyways. But anyways, you can see that I'm now on my Xbox on a client computer through the internet. So pretty cool use case. I can now kind of uh, pick back up on my franchise uh, and continue playing um, through my game. And even though I am not on the the same exact network, I'm actually going all with the internet. I can still play and have a great experience. So all in all, uh, it's a great project. It's uh, Fairly easy to set up. This should be a fairly short video, even though I do get to talk at some points in time uh, and kind of uh, go into more detail than some people might care. Uh, but all in all, it's a, a fairly easy project and very cool uh, because if you're away from your house, you can still actually play your Xbox games. And there are a lot of games that are kind of still console exclusives. Like if you're a uh, Madden fan, there's no way you can play that on PC. Uh, and a lot of the, you know, like the Halo games, uh, Halo Wars actually came to computers, but like the Halo games themselves are all still console exclusives, uh, with the exception of the first two, which did come to PC. Um, so all in all, a very fun experience, uh, and, you know, so far, uh, I've done a little bit of testing for this video because I wanted to make, before I did all the work to do a video, I wanted to make sure that this concept would work, so I've kind of already tested all this uh, to prove that it will work and had a great experience in testing all that. Um, but just all in all, it's a very fluid experience. Uh, Parsec has very low latency, so as long as you have good uh, network connections uh, on both your streaming, uh, your server computer, which will need good upload, uh, bandwidth and on your client computer which will need good download bandwidth you should have a great experience all right so that's pretty much it for today's video guys give it a big like if you found this video helpful or otherwise enjoyable also smash that subscribe button if you're not already an existing subscriber to stay tuned for more great videos from thought-provoking tech 
I will be doing having a video that kind of follows up to this video um, where I'm kind of doing a real world demonstration and uh, testing of uh, Parsec playing my Xbox One over the internet. So stay tuned for that in the near future also. And I also cover a bunch of other different topics outside of just, you know, cloud gaming such as cryptocurrencies and 3D printing. So that's pretty much it for today's video guys, as I've already said. And until next time, Zach out.